Rise now, my fellow hunters, and prepare yourselves for a journey of epic proportions as Marcus Wolfhart leads us on a great hunt into Lustria. So in today's video, guys, we're going to be beginning episode one of our Marcus Wolfhart campaign. We're going to be on very hard difficulty, and we are going to be doing the Eye of the Vortex. So let's take a little bit of a look at the faction, what they do, what are their unique mechanics, and what units do they also start with. But first, I want to say I am really, really excited for this. The I played a couple turns of the campaign. I haven't gone past like turn four or five, so I'm going to be learning with you guys. But man, it is so cool. So firstly, the Emperor's Mandate. So receive the Emperor's acclaim by advancing the Empire's cause in Lustria, leading to the provision of better quality units to reinforce the expedition. So every couple turns, I'm not sure how many turns it is or if it changes over the course of a long campaign, but essentially you kind of get reinforcements, which you get more reinforcements, actually the more hostile you are with the uh, local natives, which is pretty, uh, it's pretty intense for sure. So it can kind of lead to like this horde mode survival if you get yourself in a bad situation. Wolfhard's hunters attain these services of some of the finest hunters to have ever lived. So you have a multitude of quest chains, which you guys will see once we do start the campaign. I'll make sure to show you right away. But essentially you track down these uh, fellow hunters. So I believe there's a dwarf, there's an elf, there's a Bretonian, And I think the last one, I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, but anyways, we'll take a look and we'll jump into that once we get there. Well-rounded unit roster with a wide range of magical lores and war machines. So it is well-rounded, yes. You have infantry, you have archers, you have war wagons, but also if you look at the faction effects, limited roster, only basic units are immediately uh, recruitable. So you're going to be starting with the bare bones, like you know, swordsmen and archers and relatively low tier units, which can be tricky considering the, uh, the fact that you're going to be fighting against lizardmen like right away. And Lizardmen, in my opinion, are notorious for having one of the better starts. Soros Warriors are just so cost-effective. They can grind down troops really, really efficiently, especially state troops. So I've got to be careful, and my wagons are certainly going to have their work cut out for them. Reinforcements from your empire bring powerful units to bolster. So yeah, you get that you get that buff, which of course is very helpful. Essentially how it works is you get the reinforcements, and they're completely free. You don't have to pay for them, and it's uh, quite cool. Hostile actions will result in retaliation from local factions, but you will also empower your own army. So... You, there's kind of a bit of a balance. You can go through more of a diplomatic way if you want to. But of course, we're going to be going in deep. We're going to be pretty aggro and uh, hopefully it'll be fun. When you recruit the Huntsman Generals, you get plus three to the recruit rank. And of course, the Lizardmen aren't going to like you because, yeah, why would they, right? So Lord Effects, Ambush Defense Chance plus 50%, Ambush Success Chance 50%, and minus 50% upkeep for Archers and Huntsman Units. So though they may not be the most cost-effective units in all circumstances, minus 50% upkeep is quite enticing. So anyways, guys, we're going to be playing on very hard, and uh, the battle difficulty is going to be hard. I don't know if it makes much of a difference, but we're just going to be doing this. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Most of this campaign series is going to be recorded. We may actually stream some towards the end once we get a little bit later in the campaign. And I do have a feeling based on what I've seen about this campaign, it's going to be a relatively quicker one, based, uh, just like Vampire Coast, which was my favorite. I really like that kind of narrative being coming full circle rather quickly, rather than being a really drawn out one where you get to the point where you're just kind of landsliding the AI. And at that point, it kind of just loses its charm for me. But yeah, these earlier campaigns, I think are very, very fun. So on that note, guys, let the great hunt begin. Marcus Wolfhart signals the charge. And here we go. jungle continent of Lustria lies west across the great ocean. The first men to land upon these shores ransacked an ancient temple, filling their ships with golden treasures. Word spread of their wealth, and others were eager to follow. Fueled by greed, men of the Empire ventured deeper into the jungle's heart. The land of beasts, ravaged and plundered for its riches. It will not be without consequence. The jungle stirs. A cold-blooded fury rising to punish the invaders. In the temple cities of Lustria, the lizardmen enact a ritual to call upon their mighty guardian. For the wanderer roams Lustria once more. The spirit of the jungle made manifest. A 
reckoning has come. Only the strongest will survive the coming bloodshed. That was an awesome cutscene. Oh man. Oh, getting hyped for this. I love I love kind of the iconic duel, right? You have these like two characters and you know, you kind of felt it a little bit when you had like, you know, in some of the other DLCs, yeah, there's these rivals. You have like the crone and you have, you know, for example, uh, what the hell was her name? Alaria the Radiant. I mean, it kind of felt like they're rivals, but this truly feels like the hunter and the beast are just like going to be butting heads, which I think is very rich. So yes, Marcus Wolfhart has dutifully answered the emperor's call. So we'll see if we can do Karl Franz proud. Certainly going to be tough, and the campaign is marked as hard difficulty, and from the first couple turns I played, I can kind of see that, because some of the units you have, like the War Wagon and your Archers, are relatively squishy, right? So if you don't have good micromanagement and positioning, I can see this campaign actually being rather difficult. So here we go. ...across the great ocean on the Emperor's command. I shall tame this jungle-infested continent and plunder it for the treasures it holds. The near unimaginable wealth of these lands is dispatched home through the coastal colonies. But recent raids by the lizard beasts have set the empire back, and I expect further attacks. Other enemies loom nearby, savage orcs no less, who raid nearby abandoned cities. These ancient places are sure to harbor more riches, so are prime locations for colonization. But we must be aware that the lizard beasts dominate these jungles. For our colonies to survive their threat, reinforcements will be needed from home. The time of opportunity is now. Lustria and its dangers await. Anything that stands before me in the hope of defeating the Empire will meet its end by my bow. It is the Emperor's will. So apparently it's the Emperor's will, which is cool. How they play. The Emperor's mantle, or mandate, <laughs> the mantle, mandate. Sent to the shores of Lustria by Imperial Mandate, Marcus Wolfhart intends to protect the New World colonies from their Lustrian predators with only limited supplies and troop numbers. Tough stuff. As further reinforcements will not arrive from the Old World for quite some time. So I believe it's actually four turns. So <laughs> it's not like that long, but yeah, it's going to be four turns. However, increasing the expedition's acclaim by raiding the jungles and expanding your territory will uh, into them will lead to better oh, quality troops dispatched in your Imperial supplies to further aid the expedition. Hostility. The lands beyond the Empire are a hostile place. Well, I feel like the Empire is a hostile place too. I mean, there's there's no escaping it. Your actions there will not go unnoticed by the natives. Winning offensive battles and harassing local inhabitants, make me sound like such a villain, geez, will increase their hostility towards you, but also improving your standings with the Emperor and increase the rate at which Imperial supplies reach the expedition. Cross the locals too much though and face their wrath, because you can see up here there's all the different meters. We'll take a look at a second. Wolfhart's hunters, scattered across the world, are some of the finest hunters to ever have lived. Track them down and secure their services to complete the expedition's goals whilst developing each hunter's unique attributes and learning of their past glories and tragedies. I'm actually very excited to see kind of the story elements of that. That's going to be quite a bit of fun. So we've taken a look at that. The first mission is going to be uh, to capture a settlement belonging to, La to, to Laxalan. Hopefully we won't find Toothsayer in there because that would be a tough battle. But we're going to be uh, doing our best there. So you can see up here, Marcus has given us a pep talk, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of the unique uh, tabs here. So Wolfhard's Hunters. So oh man, look how metal that guy looks. Witch Hunters are so cool. So here you have a bunch of different options and each of them, these are the four Hunters. You have the Witch Hunter, you have the, the Proud Dawi. It looks like you have the uh, the Hunter and the Bretonian. Which one did I miss before? Was it the Witch Hunter? It might've been actually. But anyways, each of them have a different circumstance through which you actually uh, start to acquire them. So for example, be at war with the following factions. The Vampire Coast Mutineer, uh, Mutineers will start this quest chain to rescue him. So you can go whichever direction you want. We'll probably get the Witch Hunter first because he's like right next to us. I believe, I think the Mutineers are like south and to the east. And this is the Northern Spine of Sotek. So we have to move a character all the way down there for the dwarf, which uh, we'll probably do a bit of a Southern expansion and just kind of have a, a kind of a barrier up to the North here. Although, we'll, we'll play it out. Maybe we'll go take out, you know, Mastamundi and some of those big dino threats. And for the next guy, you can see, raise hostility level to very hostile. Well, that's not going to be hard. So this one, we don't have to go anywhere. We basically just have to, uh, you know, <laughs> just get everyone angry at us. And for the Bretonian, move any character to the following region, which I believe this one's really close to us. So, yeah, I think the, the mutineers are, like, down here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is, like, the Vampire Coast. So we just got to, you know, move down here, fight the Vampire Coast. 
And I'll read the, read the whole lore tidbits. I mean, there's a whole bit of you know lore about these guys and it's very story driven. So once we do unlock their respective quest or objective, I'll go ahead and read you guys all the lore and everything like that once we get do get to that point. So the tech tree is uh, pretty pretty cool. You can see here we have colonial uh, factors, which is gonna be the first one we choose. Tie three baits, this is gonna give us growth and public order. So this is you know pretty much just a, yeah, it's, it's like growth and that kind of stuff here. And diplomatic missions, so we can send diplomatic missions to different factions if we want to by paying 7,000 gold. So in the late game, if we're a little bit, you know, we, we just wanna kind of wrap things up and get people allied with us, we can do that, which is cool. And you can see, yeah, Empire, Kislev, Southern Realms, all that good stuff, and yeah, well, purge the foul. When fighting against Greenskin, Skaven, and Lizardmen. For a second, I was like, is that a mission to go ally with the Skaven? That would not make sense. Phoenix King, Purge the Fell. Yeah, so you have certain things that help you against a faction. So obviously doing that against Lizardmen is quite nice. Purge the Knife Ears. Purge the Ruinous uh, Breeds. All right. So Chaos and Beastmen. Things are getting pretty crazy. We have Hunting Advances, which is going to be quite good as well. So this one gives you plus two recruitment rank for all imp uh, Imperial Supply Units. And this one gives you Casualty Replenishment. So we'll probably honestly do Tithe Rebates, Hunter's Guild, and then get down here to the Colonial Fort. And from here, this is really good as well, Seaborne Logistics. So ports obviously get a little bit more efficient and you're gonna be focusing on ports. And from there, we get the receive an additional detachment. And that's really big actually, getting an extra unit from these, these drops, you guys will see, it's very powerful. Uh, the library here, this is industry. Up here, we have uh, missiles, we have you know war machines, we have cav and we have infantry. So a lot to explore. Of course, we'll be doing that as we go, but the first one we're gonna do is growth and public order, which are very, very important. So I think we've covered most of our bases. The main objective here you can see is going to be at the start of your turn, have 100 acclaim. So we got to build this up here at the top. So yeah, here's the acclaim meter. So we get some for hunters unlocked, settlements captured, port buildings uh, upgraded. So ports are important. And the acclaim goes, you get yeah, more stuff, recruitment rank. The lizardmen hate you more. They hate you even more. You get more recruitment stuff. So basically this is a claim and we need to get this to 100 to actually have a chance to beat the campaign. Now this is the other metric, which is the hostility. So in four turns, we're going to be getting reinforcements. The next care package will arrive in four turns. Uh, level one, we get, you know, we get more stuff, but public order starts to hurt because essentially the locals are being attacked. Uh, they're hostile. It gets worse and worse. So public order becomes worse. Enemy leadership gets buffed and enemy weapon strength goes up, but we just get juicy, juicy reinforcements. So I think that's kind of cool. The enemy's going to get stronger, but we get more stuff. It, it becomes like this escalation battle, which I think is very neat. So firstly, at our main city, we're going to upgrade this. We're just going to go in deep and get the rally field to give us some spearmen and crossbows. And yeah, I mean, we don't have too many options. We could break that down, but I don't think that'd be prudent. Yeah, vengeance. So we got Rock Jor here. It's going to be our first battle. So you guys get to see Marcus in action here. You you are Marcus Wolfhart. I I, I hear you, buddy. And obviously, Chotek is, or Chotek is going to be the first city we take. So. Ready yourselves. Ready yourselves. I'm not going to auto-deploy because I'd probably lose that or auto-resolve. That would be like a pretty wretched way to start the campaign. Like, all right, guys, Marcus is here. He's, he's riding on that wagon. He's doing 360s. He's shooting things. And then auto-resolve, just, just, just done. That'd be pretty unfortunate. So the Battle of Temple Telecon. Telecon. A little bit hard to say some of those names for sure. Rock Jor, the first nemesis that shall fall to Marcus's bow. I mean, he's got Saurus and a Bastilodon, so certainly not a terrible army, but... You know what? You know what they have that we don't, though? Or what we have that they don't is the Glorious Wagon of War. So we're just going to have a standard deployment formation. We have archers and regular huntsmen. Huntsmen, of course, anti-large, and the archers are just kind of, you know, just a very cheap archer unit. Marcus is going to be uh, offset a little bit. He's just going to be taking pot shots at the big dinos, and the wagon is going to be just causing problems in the formation. So we'll try and minimize casualties, obviously, but, you know, do what you can. So firstly, Marcus has 180 range, and he does start with the focus shot. And also that reminds me, when we do level up after this battle, I'll show you guys all the different, uh, you know, traits that you can get there. So Marcus probably wants to snipe the Lord. I mean, the Bastilodon you can snipe, but I've noticed the focus shot's very, very good. We'll start shooting at the Bastilodon at first, but the wagon actually works really well as a chariot. Now, I don't know about building a whole army around them because their output isn't the best, but as like a disruption unit, it's quite good. So we're going to snipe the Lord, and when he gets a little bit closer, he's a little bit kind of shrouded in his units right now, so I kind of want to pull him out a little bit, but granted, I do also want to get the cooldown reset, so we're going to do that. Wagons, we're going to pull over here, just cause some disruption, and we're actually going to be charging into the stink cohort. So the first shot going down makes good contact, and the Lord is going down. We're going to try to juke some of those shots. Oh, look at that. MLG multiplayer jukes. So here comes the wagons, guys. You guys ready for this? Yeah, before the Empire. <laughs> they don't have as good mass as like regular chariots, but they're still annoying, right? Like you can see it's kind of like screwing up the uh, attention of the uh, AI here. So get archers on that guy, use the uh, wagons to just kind of pull through and like, yeah, like the whole force is over there just kind of trundling about, right? So get those swordsmen charging in. The bows should be able to kind of polish things off there and we'll get Marcus shooting again here. We just don't want to run into the forest. We also don't want to lose wagons, so. So far so good, archers are shooting. Marcus is going to be uh, sniping the uh, the Lord because Saurus Old Bloods are a pretty powerful unit, so we don't want to mess with that. 
And here comes the first beastie. Send those guys here. We'll go you here and pull these archers back a little bit. In the wagon, we actually wanted to be shooting at the uh, Basilodon here, so hopefully he rampages into the spears, which is good. Marcus is working on the Lord, making some decent progress. We're pretty far ahead in the bounce of power here. We're going to pull the cards back now and just have it shoot at the Bastilodon, which I think is going to be prudent. Yeah, all the right units are fighting the right targets, so let's start shooting this guy if we can. Marcus, can you polish this guy off? Maybe just going for the Bastilodon's better. Card's going to be slamming into things, so let's put it in melee mode. Spears can just kind of keep chasing here. Yeah. It's, it's a hard fight, like I said. Like, it's not, like, super easy. Like, you're going to have some, you know, pretty pertinent threats here. But, obviously, we'll get them with army losses eventually. Marcus will have another focus shot here soon, too, which is cool. So, he'll slam the carts into the back of the source. See if we can burn through the witches and slam through the ditches. All that good stuff. Swordsmen are broken. So, now we're going to fan out a little bit. Just so both of our archers don't get compromised once they go. Pull the wagons back. Marcus is going to keep shooting. So, we've broken the Bastilodon, which is good. So, at this point, the carts can... I don't know if it's worth chasing down the Bastilodon, but... It might be, because, yeah, we're going to have to, you know, fight this army again, essentially, so. So these guys can start shooting here at these skinks. Spearmen are going to be breaking, and those swordsmen should be coming back relatively soon, but our carts actually took a lot of damage there, which is, uh, eh, surprised about that. Yeah, I guess the swords are, are hitting them pretty hard. So we'll charge into these guys. Let's actually go finish the Bastilodon with our carts, just to make sure. Spearmen are broken, so now we pull back here, we pull back here, and those swordsmen are here. Marcus needs to now snipe the Lord, so let's do a focus shot right here on the Rock Jaw, or whatever the hell his name is. The Skinks are coming. Yeah, I think we need the cards, actually, to uh, fight here. Is he doing the focus shot? Focus that shot, Marcus. Huntsmen aren't, aren't slouches of, of combatants. They're, they're pretty decent. So archers can kind of shoot these guys in the back here, and the focus shot. Oh, the no-scope coming in! Man, I really do want to finish off the Bastilodon, but we need to... Uh, and these guys can just fight here. It's fine. It's just Skinks. The cards will come in. And Marcus can kite really well. So we did pick off the Lord, which is cool, but we still have a lot of Saurus to deal with, but we'll probably break them due to army losses, actually. Pull these Spearmen back in. We have to make sure we finish off some stuff. Yeah, we can just do a big Alpha Strike here. Marcus can just fight the Cohorts. Swordsmen should be able to beat those guys. I guess the Saurus are the more important ones to finish. Skinks are going to be tough to catch. So let's get these bow units, just have them start shooting at these uh, little Skink Cohorts as they flee. Marcus can do that. We'll chase those guys. You see what I'm saying? Like, that battle wasn't, like, super easy. Like, it, like... A newer player could lose that, for sure. Let's shoot those guys, just kind of beat them up a little bit. The Bastilodon's running, so we're not going to catch that. But the carts and swordsmen should be able to finish off the Saurus. Come on, get them! Yeah, let's run over there and get the Saurus. There's 12 of those guys left. I actually don't want to friendly fire and take out a cart, so let's face them the other direction. <laughs> that would be really unfortunate. So yeah, Saurus warriors have seven models left. Not sure why. Oh, they're, they're kind of like separated chasing. Oh, that's unfortunate, so I probably should try and focus those guys down. Focus Shot can only be used against single entities, so you can see here. Maybe, I wonder if there was one Saurus left if I would be able to get them. Wouldn't that be funny? Yeah, I guess I could just end battle now. Screw it. I don't want to keep you guys watching that miserable chase down, but for anyone who's new to the campaign, if you are really looking to min-max and you're playing on a harder difficulty, that is a very good idea to actually chase down those units. So yeah, Marcus definitely packs a lot of punch. His Focus Shot, very good. Certainly very good in multiplayer, but in campaign, it's going to be even better. And now that we won that battle, you guys will see that we have some options for leveling up. So, of course, you can make him just like the Sniper Lord, which I think is fine. I mean, but I think I'm going to do more of a well-rounded army build, so. Yes, you are the Hunts Marshal. So, we certainly need to go finish off this army, because if we don't, it's going to run back to the city. It's going to recruit. It's going to be a bit of an issue. Cool. So, skills. Big tree. Blue tree, pretty standard stuff. Attrition, you know, eventually you get down to a Quartermaster to recruit that. Uh, recruit that. But Route Marcher does give us that 10%, which is very, very nice. But here you have the Inspiring Presence, so this is your standard tree to upgrade your troops. Like Pistol Corpse is pretty good if you want to have like a big missile army, which we probably will. So Free Company Militia, Crossbowmen, Huntsman, Archers, they get that. When you fully get it, they obviously get missile damage plus ammunition. We'll, we'll probably rush to that pretty quick. And uh, from there, just to give us a little bit of, you know, more punch in the early game. And then we'll switch trees. So Red, we'll go there. And up here, this is, uh, you know, the Combat Tree. It does lead to the Hunter Snare, but this tree isn't going to be that great because it's mostly uh, melee-centric. Although at the end there is something cool, Hunter's Trap. Oh, he actually gets a trap. That's kind of cool, like a snare, but yeah, so you can get up to two snares. Focus Shot Tree is pretty cool. You can make him just an absolute destroyer of worlds with his own bow. You get you get another special shot. You get the Executioner Shot, which replaces the Focus Shot. I don't know how worth it that's going to be, so probably will avoid this tree, but this one's really good. So the best of the beast up top. Recruit Rank, Melee Defense, Survivalist, so you get Campaign Line of Sight, Replenishment, you get Upkeep Reduction for your units. 
you get just all kinds of good shot double shot ammunition for your huntsman units i mean you get all kinds of crazy stuff and the grand hunts marshal does give your entire army vanguard and immunity to psych but for now we're going to get route marcher it's a pretty good standard one just to start off the game the so never fall. the problem with going over here is like we don't get to recruit more but yeah we need to we need to finish this army off and i can auto resolve this probably yeah i mean if i lose the swordsman unit it's okay yeah another trophy for the hunts marshal i am Oh, perfect. And we can actually get right back into our territory. So here we're going to go into the red tree here because we want to get the pistol corpse and uh, get those guys nice and saucy. And we'll take out the city next turn. But we're going to recruit some units. So um, archers are cool. I think free like free company are probably going to be a little better here because they give you like a bit of a second front line. And against lizards, I think that's going to be good. Well done, comrades. Look at him just like, you know, getting things going. So we get a camp follower. So... And the Apprentice Wizard is probably better. Granted, we don't have any Winds of Magic or anything. Yeah, cool. So we'll pass turn. And uh, I think we're good to go. The sound the horn. The hunt begins. His Royal Thickness up there. Maz Money just being uh, being nasty. Fighting the Norskins. Looks like he's struggling to beat them, actually. I remember that I remember that struggle. Playing Maz Money and having to deal with those annoying Norskins. They just have like horsemen and chariots. And it's just like, oh, Sir Thak, why are you in Lustria? <laughs> why is this happening to me? What's that song? I'm trying to... I'm trying to think of that. Some song comes to mind when I say that. How could this happen to me? I've made some mistakes. Yeah, just anyways, guys. I'm sorry. So cringy. Yeah, Jesus. Right. So Chalk Tech uh, has a pretty wimpy little garrison. We could probably go take them out. Granted, is it a walled city? No, it's not. Okay, so we'll just go fight that. We'll take it quick. I believe it's in the same region. Yeah, so obviously pretty straightforward there. We are the best. Dude, look at that. He's he's, he's preaching. He's like, we're the best. I'm like, yeah, dude. Down. Okay, so they got two Saurus. Uh, yeah, it's just... Back, so watch mine. Look at him. He's such a bro. Marcus is just like, hey, man, I got your back. You watch mine. I love this guy's attitude. Brings me back to my high school football days. The glory days. But anyways. The Battle of Chokchak here. Saurus are very strong. And, uh, you know, the Coldwell Knights could potentially do some pretty good work against our wagon. So, uh, yeah, we're going to make sure that, you know, we pull the Coldwell Knights away and just kind of shoot them down with Marcus. I don't think there's going to be any single entities to actually shoot for us uh, act for us to shoot here. Our main core is a little bit beat up. I mean, I could do fancy deployment tactics, but we're just going to kind of keep it pretty basic here. Free Company Militia will be in the secondary line. Archers in the third. There you go, buddies. Very basic deployment. And we'll get this. Once the battles get a little bit more difficult or in, like larger in scale, I'll show you guys some cool like deployment tactics and things like that. So Marcus wants to shoot the... Uh, I mean, at first we'll shoot some Saurus, which is fine. Get the army and... Uh, can actually square up over here. I think that gives our wagons more time to kind of trundle. Shoot some Saurus, which is fine. Focus shot has no, you know, no real opportunities here. <laughs> we're just gonna, we're gonna wagon them, boys. Let the glorious war wagon go. You can build his army a couple ways. For in terms of wagons, we'll probably have like one or two wagons to run interference plus the uh, Hellblaster ROR eventually. Yeah, and you can see we're getting the, the, the cab units are like really hanging back there, which is interesting. I don't have the Amber Bow yet, so obviously I can't use any like crazy sniping, but yeah. Marcus is going to take a little bit of work from those Javelins, but picking off the Cold Lens Riders is going to be a priority number uh, uno there. So yeah, it seems like most of their cavalry are over here, so Marcus just kind of keeps shooting at those guys, and let's bring the wagons over there to, uh, you know, run some disruption. Free Company Militia, let's turn. Saurus are like really, really high priority targets. Archers and Company can shoot those guys, let's pull them into some spears, that would be ideal. Marcus, we can come back and uh, just, you know, have Marcus can honestly just fight with the infantry. Cool. So the spearmen are going to be going. Free company are shooting there. Wagons. Wagons actually took a lot of damage. They got caught there. Oh, interesting stuff. Anyways, all our focus fire should be okay. So now we can get those guys fighting. Marcus can fight here as well. And the spearmen can kind of pile over here. Free company militia can pull back, but those wagons really got punished, actually. Surprised about that. I mean, as long as they don't fully die, it's okay. They'll, they'll probably be able to come back online. Pull these guys out. We have range tools, so we should be, you know, spreading out our assets a little bit. Free company militia taking out those knights. We have some swordsmen that can go in there. Marcus is pretty decent melee. Swords are very slow, though. Oh, these are the spears, yeah. We should probably halt here to uh, make sure we're braced. So we're going to halt at the last second. We get the charge defense, hopefully. But it wasn't too slow on that. Now we can start shooting in here. The wagons got pushed off the map, but that's not really a big deal. Because, you know, we were sloppy with them, obviously. I expected them to be able to kind of take a little bit more of a beating there. But, you know, it's, it's okay. Let's put these guys in guard mode. Shoot here, shoot here. And the Coldwind Knight should be breaking in a second. I mean, man, really good leadership on those things. You guys go fight some skinks. Chase you guys off the battlefield. The Huntsman can just start shooting in here. 
They should be broken off here in a second. I mean, it's a city battle, so we don't really have to like worry about you know taking them out to the last. Let's move some guys up there. Start getting some pot shots. Marcus uh, can start hiding a little bit because we're going to be pulling these guys. Let's pull you guys here. You guys here. Marcus can yeah. Marcus has a he can run and shoot obviously, so he's going to be pretty good there. Swordsman are really holding quite well. I'm impressed with those guys. Let's turn and shoot. Turn and shoot. Kind of fan out our threats. Source are really slow, so obviously in campaign. See, this is the thing. In a lot of campaigns, like your starting army is going to have like a really good infantry core, so you can easily win most of your battles. But here it's actually a little bit of a scary situation, I must say. Shoot Saurus. We have more numbers, so we pull back, we crossfire. That's the way to do it. Marcus and company should be able to finish off these skinks. And uh, we don't need to worry too much about polishing those guys off. So the, the wagons took a beating for sure. But wagons are a pretty good interference unit, much like in Vampire Coast. You run interference for your gun line. That's how we're going to be doing it here, but. This campaign also becomes exponentially easier once you uh, do get your freaking uh, your reinforcements. Like you guys will see in two turns, it, it like changes everything. That's where I played to before. I played like the first five or six turns until I got my reinforcements and then I stopped because I, want, I like exploring it with you guys and like having those surprises and revelations at the same time. I think it's very fun. So Bestel Bust and his uh, Saurus Brigade. Saurus Warriors are so meaty. Those guys are just beast mode. I mean, we didn't lose any carts, which is good, so we don't have to worry too much about replenishing those. The scout shall never fall. The scout shall never fall. There's just some Saurus growling at me. <laughs> Alright, so we did that. Of the Empire. And since he's all about the bros, we're going to buff up the pistol corpse, because we're going to be going for a ton of... I mean, getting the focus shot is cool and all, yeah. But I think, I think this is, like, the smart way to play. Like, buffing up the strength of our infantry early. Hostility increases. Perfect. And we get reinforcements in a couple turns, and now we can recruit. So we're going to get some... Uh, can't quite get Huntsman yet. We'll be able to get Huntsman next turn, which is uh, quite good here. So I think we'll get some more free company. Actually, we probably need like just more stuff in the front line, to be honest. Some spears, too. Yeah. And we'll go for growth. Uh, public order is going to be something we'll be able to deal with rather easily here. So growth and uh, income is, is always good. I'm sure we'll be able to upgrade this next turn. So now comes the great question. Where do we go from here? We have a lot of options. I think the Buccaneers are right here. So you can see the Vampire or the Mutineers, the Vampire Coast Mutineers, which does open up our Witch Hunter. Obviously, he's going to be hunting vampires and stuff like that. So I think he'd be a fun first one to get. Like, because, oh, man, I'm really excited to see all those characters and everything. That is going to be awesome. So you can see here all the fun stuff going about for the other factions. What is this thing? Oh, this is this is uh, Sulastra. That's old news now. Mission issued. Recruit a unique hunter. So here, here's our next mission, to recruit one of these guys. So, Vampire Coast Mutineers. So we'll declare war on them, at the very least. <laughs> Non-aggression pact. We shall declare war! So that's going to open up our quest. It should. Okay, so mission successful. Von Hell joins the expedition. Oh, Von, Von Hall. Hal. Van Hal. Von Hall. It's Von Hall. While following a trail through the dense jungle canopy, you stumble upon a clearing strewn with dead bodies. Oh, that's grim. They look like Seafarer Senior uh, Admiralty of some sort, perhaps. But stranger still was the fact that each had a stake through the chest and was decapitated. Man, this guy's heavy metal. On closer inspection, you realize that they were already dead before they met this gruesome fate. In fact, not dead, but undead vampires. Oh, man, goodness. A few nights later, a mysterious man emerged from the jungle, introducing himself as Hertwig von Hall. His garb indicated he was a witch hunter of the Empire, but he revealed himself to be... The healer you have been seeking. Interesting. Witch hunter healer. Explaining your cause to him, you asked him to join the expedition. He accepted, but on one condition, that you help him with his own mission in Lustria in return. Okay. Successfully carry out a hero action. It's our next mission here. Every last beast. <laughs> Every last beast. So is he going to be a recruitable hero is the question. Let's take a look here. Okay. I don't know if he's in our actual force here. It doesn't look like he is. Okay, so now we have something here. Move one hero to the region owned by the following race, the Vampire Coast. Okay. And objective reward, hunter specialties, and allied reinforcements will arrive during the final battle. Okay. So Hertwig is, I suppose he's in our force kind of, but I don't know if we get to use him until we kind of uh, finish his, his different missions here. Let's actually take a look here. It's not in the Regiments of Renown tab. Recruit from your Imperial Supplies. Nope. Okay, so anyways, now we're going to recruit some uh, some better tier units here. And it looks like the Huntsman might actually be a top tier one. Yeah, so you don't get Huntsman until the next tier, which is interesting. Marcus Our forces are in okay shape. So I think what we could do here is we can start Marcus to move Wolfhart. down south. 
maintain control of two provinces. So we have one. Raise hostility level to very hostile to get the elf. Successfully carry out a hero action. Marcus Wolfheart. Now, is there any sort of heroes we can recruit? I feel like I'm missing something. It's not in the lords. Not in heroes. Perhaps it's something that will appear next turn. Anyways, so what we'll do is we'll start moving. Public order is uh, a thing. It could potentially lead to rebellion, but let's go ahead and map out where we want to go. So Tlax the line is down here, and I'm pretty sure we're going to get some sort of a quest to kind of deal with those guys. Tlax, and then there's also another big city down here. So that's a that's a pretty big region to kind of try and conquer there. Tlax the line, and this region could be pretty good as well. But if we want to get the Vampire Coast quest going, I think going that direction is going to be smarter. So this is our own region here, so we're going to go ahead and just move down here. And we'll go into, uh, we'll be recruiting as well. So Marcus is going to continue his quest down to the border. And from there, let's get some crossbowmen, get some variants. We have free company, we'll get some huntsmen later, and maybe recruit some like cheap archers. Although the upkeep for the archers is super cheap, actually. 44 compared to 125. I think we'll go for the basic archers, just because Marcus has like a, a buff for them to make them really cheap. Oh, there he is. Okay. Hertwig von Hall. Assassinate, damage walls, block army. Loyal or not, they'd better fight. Driven by vengeance. Melee attack and fighting vampire coast. All right. He's got silver bullets, all kinds of good stuff. All right, guys, sorry about that. You guys are probably all watching like, he's right there. So Hertwig's going to be joining the, uh, the expedition here. Our claim is climbing. Rally field completed, and we're recruiting. It's faster. We're going to have to have a second army rather quickly here, because I know as you're... Uh, as your, you know, hostility increases, the locals actually send like little mini intervention armies at you. So I don't want to be losing my capital to no shenanigans. Granted, it seems like my capital isn't that big of an epicenter for me because it's obviously just, uh, yeah. I, I thought I would have to recruit that guy, interestingly enough, but he's just like, hey man, I'm here. Let's, let's party, let's party. So here we go. This is the big thing, Imperial reinforcement. So the expedition may have only just begun, but the emperor, Karl Franz, the man himself, Demands progress. To aid you, the Imperial Quartermaster sends word of your reinforcements ready to dispatch the expedition. The four main divisions of the Empire's military each has a package ready. They're just like, oh, what do you choose? Choose which shipment you would like to receive. So, Halberds, Huntsmen, and Greatswords. Not bad. Getting the sustainability of Greatswords is going to be pretty good. Cav reinforcements, I think, might be the best one. And, like, having mobility is just huge. Like, being able to cycle charge and hammer gives you so much utility. Artillery gives you a great cannon and an Outrider, which I don't think is that good. Uh, because an Outriders are just an okay unit, or the Grenade Launchers, and then the Great Cannon is just one piece. Like, the War Machine gives you one War Wagon plus a, a Mortar. <sighs> That's not going to be terribly useful. I do think that it's either the Infantry or the uh, the Cav. So we're going to go for the Knightly Orders for our first one. And now you'll see, we can go to the Recruitment tab for Imperial Supplies. Boom, 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 boom. Are we missing one slot here? Okay, so we actually will cut one Swordsman here. Perfect. So you recruit, and... You do have to pay the upkeep for them, though, so it's not like it's completely free, but nonetheless, that's quite solid. So we are going to be suffering some uh, freaking attrition going into these territories, which is going to be rather annoying, and it almost makes me think we should go over here. Now, is there any sort of a timestamp? So that's his, like, quest chain. We can move it along whenever we want. Proficient at laying the undead to rest. Yeah. A supporting healer, so he probably has stuff in his tech trees or a unique ability that can heal. Spine of Sotek 1 is going to take some time, so I don't think we need to worry too much about that. Race. And it's just what? Just a character? Yeah, okay, that's not too hard. Move a character to the region to the south, which is like, yeah, right here. Okay, so maybe we get to fight undead here, which is cool. Orcs. Yeah, anyways, let's do some diplomacy. Typically, you should do it right away, but trade agreement, and uh, we'll do... We'll just offer that for now. Okay. a boy. Look at you going, man. The freebooters, uh, the drowned. I don't think we care much for the vampire coast. We, we don't want to piss off our witch hunter. <laughs> the Skeggy. Do you want to buddy up with them? Dark Elves. Enjoy killing you. Not aggression pact here. Could be. Yeah, actually, they're not going to be a threat. It's not. It's not worth any diplomatic repercussions. So here we can upgrade our main city. Let's go ahead and do that. Every last beast. Now, as far as stances go, we have channeling and camp, march. We could go into march dance, which is fine. It's too bad we don't have something like where he could like hedge through the trees, like machetes out, and they like cut through the brush. So there's vampire corruption here. It's not too bad. It's only six percent. And I would like to kind of progress that Vampire Coast quest line, although Tlax line is a pretty juicy target for us to take out. Temple and here, hmm. Man, I wish, I wish, this is the time I like wish I was in stream with you guys so we could all decide together, but. All right, so do I march? March can get me towards Tlax line. 
And this is a province that's going to be a little bit tough to complete. I think this province is actually better because it's like more uh, centralized. So we'll, we'll get this and we can work down to Vampire Coast through this route too. So we're actually going to go into March Dance. And we're going to go over here. <laughs> we'll raise some... Let's get some hostility going, boys. Oh no, I'm in March Dance. Well, I don't think there are enemies yet, so they won't, probably won't attack us here. We are in March Dance, but I don't think it would matter. Yeah, it's like it's like wimpy little army right there. All right. So yeah, we'll we'll secure this province, which will give us a good like centerpiece before we go to the east and deal with like vampire corruption. Granted, there is a case to be made that getting the vampire corruption out of the way quicker is better, so it doesn't take as long to get rid of it. But I mean, I have a feeling that the mutineers are going to get taken out anyway. So embedded into Swarp Lot. Swarp Lot. What a name. Some of the creatures in this remind me of the Dark Crystal. All right. So, well, that that solves what we're doing. I'm surprised the mutineers are sending an army to attack, but. <laughs> we're gonna lose our freaking city. Oh, that's so obnoxious. So I could actually march dance and get ahead of him. And what? His army is like bloated corpses and deckhand mobs and things like that. I might want to do that just to not lose. He may just march past me, anyways. Yeah, honestly, what is our garrison here at Chalk Deck? I mean, it's pretty wimpy. Can he actually reach that? He might actually just siege it too. Yeah, that's a, that's a little bit annoying. Well, anyways, we'll we'll go back here. Look at this treachery. Along to the Scorpion Coast. So hopefully he'll see us here and then just come fight us. <laughs> My army's pretty fat. Vampire Knights are going to be really strong. But the bloated corpses certainly need to pay the troll toll. He might go snipe the city. Granted, he was in March Dance too, so... Maybe to reach the city, he's going to have to get March Dance. And I think if I march, I should be able to reach it before him, so... Yeah, I guess I should have gone towards the Buccaneers. But, you know, easier said than done. So they... Oh, Count Chocula's going into Encamp Stance. Okay, so we could just smash him here. Cool! We get a battle! The Defenders of the Great Plan are doing it to it. So research to technology, we did that. And search any ruined settlement, no thank you. So we get the growth in public order now. So that's gonna help us stabilize. So from here, I think I'm gonna go for the recruitment rank for the Imperial Supplies to get the casualty replan and the uh, public order buff. On the hunt. Do your work. Dude, Count Chocula, you are in huge trouble, dude. For the Empire. For the Empire. God, it feels so good to be able to say that in a campaign again. I mean, the other campaign, man, it was, it was quite dated, right, before this, but uh, yeah, this is awesome. So, you know, our, our guy's getting to hunt some undead. I'm sure he's happy about that. We're on the Battle of Talax. We do, I think, have the range advantage. So we should be able to force him into the choke points. And even so, we have uh, our archers will should be able to value trade this. And Marcus is going to be a, like on bloated corpse sniping duty. Oh, my God. You know, you have to also remember, though, that these forest battles are you know pretty punishing on the you know, missile center. Free company. Free company have really short range. Archers have... Archers don't have the best range, but we'll do something like this. And the Empire Cab are going to be just solid, too. Man. So this guy has some sort of a heal. It doesn't look like he does yet. He does have magic shots. So him and Marcus can run around in a happy little goon squad. Pistoliers in the wagon can be in a squad as well. And the Empire Knights will just lazily put in group four for now. All right. So this isn't too bad. We should be able to scoot up here. And uh, I wonder if the coast is going to cross that, that barrier. Yeah, it looks like it. So let's get the uh, skirmishing core up and see if we can cause some problems. Marcus as well. And uh, yeah, we could actually just park, like, park right here. Do some fast forwarding as we get the armies in position because there's no point to uh, meander about here. The first pistoliers have arrived, but they're not going to be efficient against gunnery mobs, so we're going to get them as more of a kind of a defensive unit against the uh, deck choppers. The Empire Knights are going to be quite good. I don't think he has many halberds, although bloated corpses can punish them, so it's a little bit scary. Oh, I was like, how did my spears take damage? How did that happen? Count chocula has got a nice little force here, and he does have Invocation of Nahek. Look at that. This guy is just going in hard here. I do want to force an open field battle to the best of my ability, so I think here is going to be fine. It's like some unit awkwardly awkwardly in position there. So we'll just do some rear hammering here. Pistoliers and the, and the coach, <laughs> the Empire coach, can uh, just shoot down the deck choppers. That's going to be a good choice. Marcus and the Witch Hunter are almost in range. Marcus just wants to pop the bloated corpses. Count Chocula can get the focus shot. And Empire Knights can just sweep around the flank here. Spearman! Empire's so awesome. I mean, is this even going to be that good? Yeah, I guess the Empire Knights back here can do that. Here comes the bloated boys. Marcus is like, watch out for the bloated corpses! I mean, the yeah, my Pistoliers could counter-skirmish them relatively efficiently too, but... 
I think it's more epic to have the Witch Hunter and Marcus sniping out those things. Uh, Bloated Corpse has actually got a cost reduction in multiplayer too, which is cool. So the bats are up here on the high ground. We'll go kind of shoot those guys. We'll put these guys in skirmish mode just in case I lapse in micro. All right, Marcus. It's getting it's getting a little close, buddy. You guys feel like shooting those guys? All right, let's pull back. <laughs> this wagon is taking those guys out, and we can just kind of shoot there. Should be fine. All right, Marcus got one. No, he got close to getting it. <laughs> a focus shot on the bloated corpse would be very funny, actually. <laughs> Take it, bring it down, bring it down. It's like it's like in the uh, two towers. <laughs> bloated corpses are such a funny unit. Oh my god. <laughs> bring it down. <laughs> bring it down. Oh god. <laughs> it's getting danger close. All right, that was really fun. All right, so the archers and company, what are you guys doing? Get, get, get in the proper formation here. Oh, one made it. <laughs> it's a freaking, the coach, the wagon wasn't able to finish it. All right, so let's pull these guys in the back now. Get ready to hammer in. We honestly don't even need the Empire Knights really, but. Free company can shoot in here. Marcus and company, uh, probably just gonna find Count Chocula and take him out. Pistlers have done a really good job there. Make sure to counter charge always. I mean, it, it, it makes a micro, it makes a difference. Not so much on a unit like this, but uh, still it's helpful. And Marcus and company, we need to find Count Chocula and try and snipe him out, so. Empire Knights, Empire Knights. And the Pistoliers can just get in position here. Shoot, shoot. Great, everyone's fighting. So Count Chocula, I don't know where he's lurking actually. He's, he's hiding somewhere up in the trees. Anyways, we'll, we'll get our Witch Hunter. He can actually just go fight melee combat. I'm sure he wants to take out some Bloodlust on these guys. The Empire Knights have gotten in there. Oh, so Chocula's in the forest. Okay. So we got our charge. Let's pull back. Let's pull back. We got our charges, which is fine. Cool. So the frontline fighting's underway. Marcus uh, could do a focus shot on uh, on the vampire counts here in the forest. We're just going to pull back and do what we can there. Ready for war. Free company can shoot at them. We got some zombos in here. Zombie. Let's do a big old alpha strike charge. Pull these guys in. Charge again. Marcus can keep trying to snipe the Chocolate Master in the forest. And you free company don't have the best line of sight, so we're having some obstruction issues here. And now these guys should be able to crumble them pretty quick. Coming in, we'll get one on you guys. We have Empire Knights doing everything. And that's just like how useful those things are. It's crazy. Focus shot. See, the Marcus armies are like more lended to like open field battles. So like battles like this actually become a lot harder than they should be because of the... Uh... Yeah, so we took those guys out. So let's, let's do a big collapse in those deckhand mobs to help out. This witch hunter just has a huge vendetta here with the uh, with the guys. Let's get him in there. All Rick's wrath. Come on, Marcus. Get some shots in there. Shooting in there. Our little goon squad can cycle charge. Empire Knights should be able to clean up shop here. That's the one nice thing about fighting vampire armies, though, is like when you beat them, you don't have to like chase them. They just crumble and die. So it's it's uh, it's pretty nice for sure. Archers can shoot in there. Pistoliers. Do a big hammering charge right there. So let's give this guy like the ceremonial beatdown, you know? Well, he might actually just crumble. Oh, that's too bad. I was going to give him like the big Marcus snipe. Summon some zombies. Zombie. What's in your head? What's in Count Gula's head? I don't know. We will never find out. So the first battle in the forest hath commenced. The Empire... Uh, expedition, able to dispatch the forces of the foul Vampire Coast mutineers. I'm sure our Witch Hunter enjoyed that battle. Yeah, I think the Empire Knights are the best choice, though. They're just such good utility. Like, being able to cycle charge Saurus is going to be really, really nice. And Pistoliers are pretty good against, like, Pterodon Riders and, like, you know, Skink-type units and things like that. So, I think that'll be good. Uh, our big issue, obviously, is going to be with big armor. But, you know, Marcus does cover that. We have the Witch Hunter, and eventually we'll get more Huntsmen as well. Mission accomplished. Ransom? There are no captives. I, I guess I guess I should ransom them, but... All right, so we don't really have to worry probably too much about that over there. So here for now, we'll get another upgrade here to get ammunition and all kinds of good stuff. The trait gained, he edges ever closer to his prize. Herwig also desires, oh, he grows stronger. Okay, that's good. So yeah, in getting to know Hair Doctor better, I've discovered that he is a most confi uh, conflicted man. He is ruthlessly obsessed with destroying vampires, but is also a skillful healer with an astounding convalescent skills. I felt I had to build up enough rapport to bring up the subject of his famous lineage once again. So yeah, he's from the Von Hell 
the famous witch hunters, I suppose. With a deep sigh, Hertwig explained his intense hate for the Von Hell name, for his ambition was always to preserve life and not to chase destruction. Interesting. For him, the Von Hells would never be innocent of their progenitor's sins, and he wanted nothing to do with them. A man can try to avoid his destiny as much as he wants, he added, but at the end, it will always find him. He would elaborate no further. The next day, he invoked me to continue helping him with a mission to track down Alistair the Red. He says the best way to draw attention from a vampire pirate is to raid their lands and waters. So that is what he will do. It's certainly not without a touch of irony that he will probably about to steal from the pirates. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, very cool stuff. So Talax is, I mean, I guess we could go for that province. Well done, Copper. Well done. yeah. I guess I could fall back to my territory too because suffering needless attrition here isn't like the best. Talax is a decent little city. I kind of do want to continue his quest chain, although getting the paladin too would be really, really strong. I'm sure. Our city seems Marcus secure. Wolfhart. Marcus is leveled up. Or the witch hunter has. Yeah, if he has a healing ability, I might actually get that. I oh, know, we don't take that from Marcus. He's got a thug and an agitator. You keep some good company, bud. So cleanse corruption, block army. I'm trying to see what he has that can heal. Accusation. Sigmar's will enable slamming attacks. Oh, that's pretty good against vampires. The untainted. Survivalist. Yeah, he doesn't have any, like... I guess it's just in terms of lore, he's a healer. We could make him a, a badass combatant, too. I mean, having assassinate's always really good, so... We'll level up that up for now. Marcus, Marcus has a full 20 stack. We'll go here. God, taking out this... Fighting Greenskins with this army would be really fun, too, though. Yeah, I guess they have this in the Pox Marsh. Getting port cities, of course, does help. Like, port cities are more valuable... Uh, because they do, of course, help here. You can see ports built or upgraded. So getting port cities like uh, the Pox Marsh would be quite good. Vampire Corruption is 100% over there, which is quite gross. So stabilizing there is going to be tricky. We'll move back here and we'll go into... Uh... Yeah, do we need to go into camp stands? Not really. We can go into uh, ambush in case anyone comes this direction. Pass turn. Really fun campaign so far, though. Like, the choices are quite broad. Like, you know, a lot of campaigns are fairly linear, but this one, it's like, I don't know. Which way do I want to fan out? Do I want to sail north and capture port cities? I think establishing a little foothold up in this like area would be quite cool. And I think to get the other guy, we just have to move a character down there. Be no pact. Their demands? Oh, man. Those guys might have to pay the troll toll for being so brazen. And maybe just recruiting the characters a little bit quicker might be better for you guys. Just because you get to, so you get to see them in the same video. All right, so Chalk Tech here. Uh, we will build... Uh, I mean, building growth buildings is cool, but we already have growth. The public order infrastructure would be helpful as well to avoid rebellion. So we're almost stabilized, actually, in terms of rebellion, buildings, technologies, and characters. And here we could build... Uh, is there any unique buildings here? Yeah, we, we have some sort of a resource. Oh, growth, grazing pastures, casualty replenishment. That's really good. Yeah, I think we're going to have to get that. I mean, building defensive oh, stuff is important as well, but... All right, so the orcs actually are amassing an army over here. And I have a feeling that they're actually going to come up and around here. They're unfriendly. What's this guy's name? Helmet Nussbacker? Oh, I thought, I thought it said something else. <laughs> um, yeah, rather than dealing with vampiric corruption. So we got him. He's going to be a while. She's easy. And this gives us, we just have to move to this region here. Let's see how far up this region extends. Yeah, so it's all the way down there, which is fine. So if we take Talax line in these territories, we could... And it's just moving a character, too. So we could actually send him to go get the Paladin. Move any character to the Falling Province. Move any character to the Falling Province. Okay, so we're going to send, send our uh, Witch Hunter down there. And he's going to go do his thing while we go deal with the Orc threat. Because that, that'll accomplish both of our goals. So we're going to march. Be a couple quick turns here, but yeah, that's that's a good that's a good solution, I think. You know, he gets to be in the vampire lands, which is what he likes, I'm sure. Just hunting down. Undercity discovered, temple. Ooh, the Skaven are nearby. A little bit of a so slow start, guys, in terms of my expansion, but you know, I'm just kind of feeling it out. What is this? This eye here. What is this icon? Oh, I'll have to explore that once uh, things get rolling. We will get to the bottom of it. Clan Nal, the filthy Skaven. Just causing problems. So yeah, we'll fight. We'll probably fight one orc battle, get the paladin, and that'll be it for the episode. And then we'll uh, save the some more hot action for the next one, of course. The nation calls. Recruiting, uh, we'll see. Is the fool? Yeah, leadership isn't helpful. Recruiting surpluses is better. 
Destroy the falling faction. Okay, so we just got a, a quest to take out Slax Lion, which makes our decision going this way even easier. And you are going to go down here. Hunt them out. Hunt them out indeed. All right, so let's take a look here. Skaven Undercity discovered in our main capital already? Goodness gracious. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm surprised. Clan Fester. These filthy rats. Yeah, we're going to destroy that. <laughs> you just hear this game and like, Ree! so we are going to have public order issues here soon. So perhaps we should just kind of hang tight. I really do want to take out the orcs, but public order, you know, we are in a harder difficulty. So technologies, buildings, this is obviously going to help more so with growth here in this uh, region. So I could declare war. I could get a second army, but I, I don't think that's going to be prudent. Yeah, that's going to be a lot. 250 upkeep will be in the negative here. Okay, so let's move a little bit. We'll stay We'll stay in the neighborhood. How many turns do we have? Eight? Eight turns is probably enough. <laughs> let's be, let's be... Oh, hello. Okay. Slaxland's coming. <laughs> All right, so we'll be on the defense. So be it. That really simplifies my uh, decision. Cool. And I think we're actually about to get the paladin too, so he'll be uh, he'll be joining our main force. What? <laughs> Nakai wants a peace treaty? Get out of here with that! Are you kidding me? No one denies the old ones as they try and surrender to Marcus. Get out of here with that treachery, dude! <laughs> I just turned the corner. Marcus is just running there. He's like, "Oh, let's go down and fight some orcs." And then suddenly, there's like a just a massive ambush of skinks lurking in the shadows. Perfect. Perfect. Settlement besieged. Okay, this is what we want. So first, we'll move our witch hunter to uh, go get the uh, the new guy there. Although I wish he was with our army so we could level him up. But I'm just trying to get the the heroic characters quickly here. The dwarf will take time. Okay, so you are currently not in the right province here. What province are you in? It looks like you're in the right one. Move any character to the following region. Okay, well. I guess we'll just go down here. Roderick joins the expedition. Excellent. Once you brought your forces, or force, to the mist surrounding the temple city of Zlan Hopek, it did not take long for the Bretonian swordsman to arrive at your camp. He revealed himself as being no mere soldier, but in fact, a noble by the name of Roderick Lee uh, L. Engui, who'd seen his entire retinue slaughtered whilst on an expedition into Lustria. While the massacre of his men, Roderick was now without an army or purpose. The vengeful tone in his voice, he told you that he's willing to offer his knowledge of uh, the city. Defenses enable a siege. Okay, that's cool. So, I think he's going to appear up here somewhere, right? Well, I guess we can go to that fancy tab. I don't play campaign. I haven't played campaign in quite some time, but... Is it because I'm, like, under siege or something? Ooh, hopefully that's not a bug. So we have the Witch Hunter. He's, he's done his job. Marcus and... Yeah, they're not appearing there. Anyways, we'll fight this battle first. What what do these skinks think is going to happen here? Agreed. You know? Ready yourselves. Like what? They think this is going to go well? <laughs> I love it. I love the... Like being under attack from multiple angles. Like that's... It's fun. It's, it's, it's a neat thing. Yeah, hopefully the paladin will appear next turn though. Like the other guy just appeared in our city. Which, maybe maybe it did take a turn. Like, when I passed, it took him a turn to appear, which would make sense. But this is mostly skinks, and this is one of the reasons why I'm very glad that I have Empire Knights. So we're going to form, like, a Helm's Deep. I think there's a couple terrain pieces we can actually... Uh, oh, it's open field. Yes, thank you. Oh, yes. So what we do here is we form a, a Bastion of... A Bastion of... The Empire. We're going to form, like, a... I mean, yeah, we could we could be really... This could actually be pretty funny. Like, archers up on the hill here. And then, like, force him into the chokes. Marcus could also snipe quite happily from up here. Oh, this could be really fun. Let's do this. Although, Archer's range is quite short. Reinforcements are going to be coming from that side, so this gives us opportunities. Yeah, the Archers could be here. They only have 120 range, though. Free Company Militia could be... Hmm. Well, anyways, uh, we'll get our main infantry. We're, we're going to need some more infantry, though. We're going pretty heavy on the missile units, which uh, I don't know how that's going to work out. They will punish skinks, though, pretty uh, pretty efficiently. So, yeah, being on this side, I think, is going to be better. Marcus has a nice high high ground position up here, which I think is going to be good. We can have some spears over here, and then the 
the rest of the troops can be kind of uh, in the river. We don't want to fight the skinks in water, obviously, because they do have the nice aquatics trait. So we'll do this. Free company militia can be kind of hanging out back here, getting ready to shoot and also fight if need be. And uh, the other one can just be in reserve, basically. All right, cool. So now we just need to micro our skirmishing corps, our cab. The wagon can be in group two with the pistoliers. Marcus on the high ground. That's probably it for now. Yeah. All right, cool. Empire Knights, Pistoliers, Marcus. Oh, man, that's right. We have a ton of reinforcements. Oh, man, I forgot about that. Okay, well. Crossbows can get up on the high ground. That's perfect for them. They can just sit and shoot whatever they want. Pull back a little bit. they have any cav or anything like that? Oh, they have skink skirmishers. Okay, that's fine. Mar Marcus just all glorious up here, just waiting for his prey. Uh, let's go ahead and just put a focus shot into you. Pistoliers and company can get on the outskirts of the battle where they'll be able to skirmish a little bit easier. <laughs> this is going to be a fun battle, actually. Marcus is going to be going after the skink leadership. The focus shot should be coming out here any second. Actually, the red crested skinks are a really good target. Let's go ahead and charge in here with some knights. The wagon can charge into those guys as well. Let's pull some knights back as well. We don't need to, like, multi-charge. Got to pull back ASAP, though. Those are Red Crested Skinks, so they're not like slouch units. Let's get you guys going. Marcus, uh, looks like he missed his focus shot. He almost never misses that, so that's a... Charge at you guys. Oh, we have some Huntsmen that we left over there. Run to the Hunts Marshal! <laughs> Cycle charge. Pull back. Pull you guys in. You guys keep going back. Wagons, just keep rolling dirty for the Emperor. Marcus continues sniping the Skink leadership. Yeah, we kind of got caught up there in a little bit of a sustained combat, which Empire Knights aren't great in sustained combat, so... And the Huntsmen can actually start shooting here, it's fine. Wagons are coming in, pull these guys into the kill box, because the archers are just going to decimate them now. Good, so we're wearing down the Skinks, which is solid. We get a nice big hammering charge with double Empire Knights there. Skink skirmishers can take a little bit of damage. We'll have focus shot relatively soon as well. Pistoliers are, are doing a good job, but the wagons are actually pretty good, like, you know, units to... Uh, Ooh, skink skirmishers are like the choicest target for our Empire Knights. The Huntsman kind of being cool, right? Like hanging out here in open field. <laughs> the skinks are like, screw this! This sucks! These stupid wagons are riding us over! <laughs> Alright, so let's get some Empire Knights over here. Ride down some skinks here. We can actually turn around and hammer into these skink cohorts pretty efficiently. Marcus, you almost got him down, buddy. Keep up the good work. Finish off these red-crested skinks. You don't want to be fighting the Skink Chief, though. That's for sure. Let's go over here. Wagon's taking a little bit of work, so let's kite back into the formation. We might not even need to use our main army. <laughs> Empire Knights, you guys should be chasing these little bastards. Just get those ones, actually. It's probably easier. Wagons, get back. Let the archers deal with them. <laughs> the damn wagons. I think it's time for the glorious no-scope. It's like point blank, so I don't know how well it's going to work, but uh, we'll get to the bottom of it. <laughs> right into the ground. That was so anticlimactic. All right, Mark, it's time for you to get back, buddy. Tamble, ham hammer these guys a little bit. Chase off those guys. Chase off these guys. Wagon can just pull back and just sit here because I don't want to lose models and stuff. And these uh, crossbows, we can turn here and start shooting down here to help out our boy Marcus a little bit. Get some spears coming. Marcus like is okay in dueling, but he doesn't want to be fighting such units up close. Yeah, crossbows are doing their job. Marcus, he, he can kite and shoot too, which is like really his big strength. But you see, he takes a lot of damage. He is squishy, so might as well have him fight now. The guy's already so low. Cool, so we've finished those guys off. Let's pull these guys into the firing zone now. Uh, the Pistoliers could come back out, but yeah, we'll just kind of keep them back now in reserve. Marcus will give this guy the ceremonial send-off. To battle! You guys ready for the no-scope? Here it comes. Get him, Marcus. Oh, he's winding up the bow. Here it comes. Oh, that skink got KO'd. <laughs> RKO. He got taken out. Empire Knight's doing a good job. Definitely want to get what value we can. Oh, but I left him, of course, in sustained combat like a fool. I thought I pulled those guys back, but it's okay. I mean, even if they take a little bit of damage, it's not a big problem. They are mere Empire Knights. But man, you're going to be able to get armies built pretty quick with this. All right, so let's pull them into the archer box. I feel like the Knights of the Empire have done their job. Marcus can go and start sniping the uh, leadership over here, which is, uh, what does he have? He's got a skink chief. Let's go there. Yeah, that's fine. 
to see just the firepower coming in is, is pretty good. Archer shooting. Little skinks are definitely in some trouble. So we'll use the Empire Knights to go out with the uh, Pistoliers and go chase down the routing units to make sure we don't have to deal with them again. Now the crossbows came out of here for some godforsaken reason, but we might as well use them now that they're here. So let's actually scoot out a little bit. We'll get this main force coming out. I don't think we need to kind of hide over there. So let's get the focus shot. Going into the Skink Chief. Crossbow doing their thing here. We'll get these Empire Knights ready. We will take to the field. The Hunts Marshal's ambush has been sprung. Come on, shoot your bow. Shoot it. Let's pull these guys back. No, don't shoot those skinks, buddy. It's a waste of your ammo. So Pistoliers are just going to go and clean up duty. So crossbows need to run. Empire Knights might need to screen because skinks are actually rather fast. So we'll screen in with those Empire Knights. Get the free company going. Uh, we'll, we'll try and wipe these units just 100 to 0. Stupid crossbows just causing problems. Right, we'll just start getting in there. Empire Knights pull back. Buying time for the crossbows. Obviously, we don't want to run into those guys. That would not be fun. There we go. Pistoliers are, yeah, they should be about out of ammo by now. Get some spearmen engaged there. Crossbows keep going. Marcus should be shooting single entities. That's usually his big strength, so you can shoot that little red-crested skink chief there. There's, there's only 11 skinks left. Actually, we don't even need to sacrifice any Empire Knights. Let's get the wagon back here as well. Crossbows get behind the formation. Bows can start shooting as well. Shoot there. Pretty cool battle, too. It's, it's technical. Yeah, it's fun. We definitely need more, like, meat in our army, though. Because, like, our infantry corps is, like, so sad. Alright, so shoot in there. What are these? These are just crossbowmen? Yeah, crossbowmen don't want to be fighting up close. So we're just going to have to have overlapping fields of fire, kind of. Let's get those guys going here. Marcus, shoot that little skink chief. Take him out, buddy. <laughs> shoot them! I suppose I should have stayed back there. I would have taken far less casualties. <laughs> All right, so Empire Knights, let's get you guys kind of hammering in. You guys shoot here. Swordsmen are coming in. Marcus is sniping, but we definitely need some supporting fire there. Let's actually just get the pistol you're hunting now. These guys can come over here and help out as well. For the war hammer. Should have these little guys offline relatively soon. Wagon can get into melee combat probably as well. Swordsman pull over here to help out. Those little skinks are going to the bitter end, I must say. Hammer into those guys, hammer into these guys, pull these guys back. Empire Knights can slam in. Wagon can get in there as well. We're going to be able to chase off a lot of routing units too, which is going to be super efficient for uh, cleanup duty after. Actually, these guys can just start shooting into the skirmishers here. Let's go ahead and set up that formation like that. Marcus can snipe the little leader here. Set it behind them with these uh, forces here. Yeah, taking out this King Chief is going to be very efficient too. If we can. So wrapping him, yeah, let's make that a big priority. Red Crest is Skinks getting in there. You know, honestly, that's the thing about Free Company. They're not like pushovers, so. Cool, we did it. A little bit sloppy. I was just kind of... I'm taking it easy on my hand today, so I'm not going to be like microing it like a hardcore multiplayer battle. <laughs> All right. Let's get you guys. Get you guys. Marcus can chase here. And uh, yeah, cool. Empire Knights can go clean up those guys. And let's fast forward. It's quite a battle, actually. Quite the skink inquisition. You know, coming for us here in the fourth quarter. Let's make sure to finish off the last of those guys if we can. Get these guys move, moving up here. These guys can move up here. Wagon should be pretty good at hunting these guys. Go, my wagons. Go for Yeah, I think we're going to be able to take out a lot of the actual models. We should be able to chase down the army too. I just want to make the auto-resolve like really easy. Marcus is on the hunt as well. That should be fine. We don't need to go too crazy on this. So had we just camped in the corner, we would have taken like no casualties. <laughs> but we decided to go out. The huntsman does not cower. Well, he lays traps. 
which I guess some could perceive. But yeah, Pistolers and Empire Knights are really good for like running interference for sure. Like you guys saw. So I was quite happy with their performance there. But yeah, like forming kill boxes and there's going to be hard battles versus Lizardmen later in the campaign, which we want to form like boxes and kind of fend them off. All right, so take those guys out. Yeah, the armies are really small now. Oh, oh, we already got the archer lady. Kalara, your activities in Lustra gained, Lustria gained more than just the attention of angry locals. One day as the expedition marched through the jungle following another successful offensive, you were suddenly threatened by a threatened ooh, by a hooded figure standing in the trees above the jungle. After you introduced yourself as the Hunts Marshal, the Emperor's chief scout, she descended and revealed herself to be a former waystalker of Athalorn, a wood elf huntress named Kalara. Around her neck hung a Bastilodon tooth, and it was clear from her appearance that she was a weathered warrior of the jungle. Kalara asked if you might help her track a particular beast she had been pursuing. Oh, the beast hunt. Not being one to turn on a hunt, you agreed, but only returned for her lending her skills. So let's go take a look at the, the Brofist here. So I met a few elusive uh, fey folk of Athalorn, and in my early dealings with Kalara, it certainly appears she is typical of her kind. On the rare occasion in the past, when my hunting expeditions unwittingly led me into the Wood Elves realm, I found them to be standoffish and determinedly detached from the outside world, almost aggressively so. Those familiar with the Azrai know better than to trespass upon their hunting grounds, for they are considered to be some of the most lethal hunters in the world. We are extremely fortunate to have brought a Waystalker into our ranks, regardless of how aloof she may be. Kalara told me that she has been in Lustria for quite some time. The beast she seeks does not prowl these lands alone, through which bringing it down will take some fight. Which is why she requested our assistance. For a Waystalker to admit that a quarry is behind, beyond her talent confirms what an incredibly dangerous monster might be. I'm guessing a Dredsorian. I gave her assurances that I would see this hunt through, but for now, we await more information regarding the beast's whereabouts. So, reach rank 5 with her? Okay, that's cool. Let's get her in the, uh, in the lad's army. On the hunt. Man, this is awesome. Paladin. Oppressive fighter. I don't think we have the Paladin yet. It's weird. Maybe it was some sort of a bug of some sort. Anyways, let's go squash the last of this army. Let's get this done. Let's get it done indeed. I need to ransom. Marcus took a bit of damage there, didn't he? So, uh, hold the line's not bad, but we're going to get the pistol corpse to maximize the efficiency of how many archers we have. And, uh, yeah, so that's going. I'm not sure where this paladin is. So, capture and occupy settlement. We still don't know where he is. He's not appearing in our, our tooltip here, but I guess we'll pass the turn. Of judgment ready. I guess we just got him this turn, so let's give it a turn to appear here. And, uh, yeah, so we've actually gathered quite the motley crew here. And on that note, let us read the lore on uh, Roderick. I think we already did this, actually. Oh, no, we didn't. The Bretonian noble Roderick... I'm just going to call him Roderick to spare myself the last name, appears to be a man of great physical strength and fortitude. He must be, for he has witnessed many terrible things while on his doomed journey. He has told me stories of men being swallowed up by monstrous things lurking in the wasty bogs they waded through on the trek, only to be spat out again in a spray of bloody gore. And then of the slaughter at Zlan Huapek itself, uh, how he had observed his men in the temple city to be totally uninhabited as they entered, getting all the way into the central plaza before being set upon by a swarm of 12-foot-tall reptilian monsters with daggers for teeth, probably croc scores. Though he had fought uh, out of his skin to survive and escape, in reality, many of his men had failed trying to protect him. Yeah, so it's kind of the tragic story. Roger clearly yearns for vengeance, but there's also a downtroddenness to his character, which I think goes far deeper than just the recent loss of his men. Maybe it is the reason why he came here in the first place, which he hasn't really talked about. Right now, Zlan uh, Huapek is in range for a potentially successful assault, which needs to be capitalized on without delay. Cool. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished indeed, brother. Kind of has a bit of a Scottish accent, it sounds like. So let's go here. Let's go into Ambush Dance. And let's pass. Hopefully the uh, Paladin will join us so we could have a pretty sweet army here. And it looks like upgrades are available due to the population surplus, so our main settlements are going to be growing. Yeah, it's a bit of a tough start. Like, you you really kind of have to grind through a couple decent armies with, you know, low-tier units. Like, archers are not great units. But in terms of cost, they do allow you to have a, a full stack relatively cheaply. You want a peace treaty? Yeah, let's ignore them. We'll probably regret that, but, you know, it's okay. I just don't feel like dealing with vampiric corruption, and I think this province is going to be a little bit easier to take. So we'll do that. And the temple. Oh, okay. 
Pirate Steel Plunder, one of the largest and fastest galleons of the Imperial fleet, was full of plundered Lustrian treasure and was making its way across the Great Oceans. During the crossing, however, the ship was attacked, boarded, and taken over by the Vampire Admiral and his undead crew. The Empire is feeling the loss greatly. Besides the myriad of treasures for the Imperial officers, the cargo galleon was scheduled to do many more crossings to fulfill its role as the main hauler of the Lustrian Plunder back to uh, the Empire. You were contacted separately by the electors of uh, Talib, Tablic Land, Hawkland, and Ostermark, who to seek uh, your backing on their chosen course of action. Okay. Increase your favor from them. Continue to support this. May lead to special rewards. Heightened tensions. So cut the military budget. Heightened tensions increases the hostility levels. Hmm. That's kind of fun. <laughs> Replace the ship. Devers, uh, Imperial supplies delayed by five turns. Search for the ship. Let's go for the hostility. So, yeah, we have negative two public order now across the board. So there's, we definitely need to get some public order infrastructure going like ASAP. So let's get you going here. The Paladin has appeared. True Knight of Britonia. Oh man, he's got a bassy voice. All right, so let's just cut an archer. They're cool, but we'll take the glorious yeah, Paladin. Right. Look at this. We like episode one. We already have like a pretty good little core of troops here, which is solid. So let's go ahead and get the Witch Hunter back. Um, although maybe he can continue his quest to get the Dwarf. So the Brofist, Northern Spine of Sotek, which is down here. That's a, quite a journey. Maybe we'll save the Dwarf for our Crusade to the south. Yeah, because I want him to be leveling up with the main army, so we're going to kind of run him up here. So as far as our quests go, uh, raid the region belonging to the Vampires, reach rank 5 with her, and occupy the following settlement, which is uh, here. So that's going to be fine, because we'll sweep this area, and then we'll come down here, complete this, and then we'll then be at the Vampire Coast. So that course of action, I think, is quite good in terms of our economy, our infrastructure, the landscape of the game and everything, and uh, we should be A-OK -okay there. So guys, that's going to conclude the first episode. I know it was a little bit slow going, but we were exploring the lore and some of the new characters. And uh, yeah, we were able to get our cities. You know, we're teching. Public order is an issue, though, for sure, because of the, uh, the hostility. So you can see it's only going to get worse. Although the public order looks like it caps out at five once you get condemned. But we do have an Imperial shipment coming. Oh, 21 turns. So it's actually quite some time. Before we get help again. All right. We're about to finish the Hunter's Guild, which, you know, I thought it was four turns, so that might not be as good. But the Colonial Fort, like anything to help with public order is going to be super nice. But from here, we'll probably upgrade our archers and get the volley fire and all that good stuff. So we have the Paladin. We have the Waystalker. We have the Witch Hunter who was able to successfully complete that quest there. Our goal is going to be to go smash some boys and get. We're going to smash the uh, Greenskins here. Talaxalan going to be going down. Yeah, that's their only territory. So taking that out, I believe, will complete that mission for us. Then we're going to go get uh, Zlan Huapek to complete the quest for the uh, Paladin. And then we'll complete the quest for the Vampires by going into the Vampire Coast and uh, kind of sweeping this whole area, which should be quite a bit of fun. So guys, thank you so much for joining in this early access. First look at the Marcus Wolfhart campaign. We'll be seeing you guys back pretty soon. I'm going to be banging these out rather fast. So you guys will be seeing more campaigns coming up and I'm really enjoying it. So thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the other side. Take care.